Hey, you guys. How are you? Look at the trios back together. <laughs> Whoa, it's been such a long time. It's Happy true. to be back. Happy to be back. Welcome back, Adam. Yeah, we finally made some time in our busy schedule. It's kind of cuckoo busy. Yep. And yes, I'm going on vacation in a, in a little bit. That's true. Uh, but the week before going away or taking time off, no matter where you go, if you're going anywhere, if you're just taking the time off, is that uh, that week before ends up being like, not so. Yep. It's kind of not. Everybody fair. agrees. Like it's like it would be okay if we, you know, just had the time off and you knew it <laughs> and everything wasn't nuts. But here we are. Are you going away, Sharon? Is that why it's nuts? Because you have to plan plane tickets or something? Uh, those are were taken care of by the wonderful Deb, who is a, a great planner for this whole trip. Yes, we are going away. Shall I say? Can you say? I can say. Oh, is it a Foo Fighter thing? No, it's oh. Italy. You didn't. Oh say that. wow! Have we not talked that far? No, we have. We have not. You see, I feel that's... very left out of your life all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we needed to to sort of rejig some stuff for uh, for us, and that bumped Adam out of the mix a little bit, and that's why lining up our schedules has been super challenging. <laughs> yeah, Italy, first time. Very nice. Very good. Super excited. Are you going to do you... like a cooking class? Ooh, that'd be fun. Um, hey, you know what? We're easy going. We're stressed out before the vacation <laughs> till we get on the vacation. Then yeah, we're easy going. See what happens. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So how many days over there? Two weeks. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But we'll make time and we'll connect uh, while I'm away because that's technology and we can do that. Yep, exactly. Last wow. time I went to Italy, I was 16 years old. I wow. had a great time. But um, didn't drink any wine, <laughs> didn't enjoy it as much as I would have loved to. So I'm kind of jealous. I want to go super, back so badly. I'm That's pretty super cool. Stoked for the wine, yeah. Honestly. Wow. Like I've, I've all I've heard is that even like the house wine or the wine you get at the grocery store is ten times better than some of the good stuff here. So not that I'm like a, you know, I just want to taste good wine. That's all. As you want. should. Yep. <laughs> Sharon's going on a two week bender is what we've learned. <laughs> if I come back and my teeth are red, you know, it's been a successful trip. <laughs> um, but for this show, uh, we've got some fun news, actually. Uh, how do you say this uh, politely? I don't even think you have to be polite. We're going to tell you the older dude who's going to be a dad again. Yeah. <laughs> With a obviously a woman who's capable of uh, bearing children. So. Older dude, younger gal. Is that a May-December uh, romance? It's a May-December, like, from different sections of uh, the decades. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll also uh, get into Kelly's trivia, go down memory lane, dancing a little bit to uh, your 90s rewind. And you know what? Still fresh off of um, the loss of Tina Turner, the long list of tributes that continues to uh, pour in. Uh, we can start there, actually, because the latest, I think, that's been making the most news is Beyonce and her salute to the great, the late, great Tina Turner. What what was the song that she did, Kel? Uh, is it Riv River Deep? What is it? Yes, yeah. River Deep Mountain yeah. High. Yep. Which is a full-on Tina Turner song. That was one of the songs that she was uh, pulled in to do um, as hers. Mm -hmm. Like the whole wall of sound thing it wasn't an Ike and Tina thing that was the focus on Tina for that so uh that I think probably would have you know given Ike some issue at that time too but the great Tina Turner made that song so uh huge now the if you're unfamiliar with the wall of sound as a reference of production that's what uh it was um a sonic thing that all the instruments were here on this track kind of thing against the vocals so it sounded pretty cool. It was very avant-garde by 60s standards. Mm -hmm. They do things differently now. Yeah. <laughs> it would have blown your mind on AM radio. <laughs> <laughs> but, but wait, here we are. I thought the wall of sound was the principle of just layering a bunch of like instruments doing the same line just to make it sound so big and so thick and so like uh, in your face. Indeed. But when you think of where people were getting their their music at that time was am radio so the layering of those sounds may have lost their punch a little bit on the radio mm, okay but, but because the vocals was, was yeah 
and you can hear it. I mean, it's it's impressive, and it's Phil Spector, a name that I don't love saying just because he was a nut bar too. Um, but the I think the the best part of that story and Tina's connection, Tina Turner's connection. I shouldn't call her Tina like we're friends. Um, out of respect, of course. The best part was that it was hers. It wasn't at it wasn't under the control of of her husband at that time. And to think of Beyonce doing that. Mm. And That's, Beyonce, uh, from what I know, and I'm sure she's even done it more, she she mentioned Tina in a concert, uh, like, you know, immediately, basically after it happened mm -hmm. and said that if you're a Beyonce fan, you would be a Tina fan because there would be no Beyonce without Tina, which is absolutely evident. Yeah. And then, you know, a few days later, then she did the the River Deep uh, song. So there might be more by the time we're done recording this, you yeah. know, episode even. So it's... um. It's important for artists like Beyonce to acknowledge the, and she's she's never had a problem doing that. I'm not saying yeah. that there was an issue, but it, it is important for for her fans to know that she knows that. Yeah, it's one it's one thing for all of us to say. Of course, we can see the uh, the chain of command kind of thing, and and how you know the whole cycle has grown, and the, the the musical family tree has extended in that way. But it is very important, I think, for her to say that to her fans. And it gives it gives young people an in to check out, you know, artists that have come before. And like Tina Turner, my goodness, she has got a story and a half. Actually, she's got two stories, two different books, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both worth reading. Um, and certainly the soundtrack that goes along with those uh, those stories is uh, is incredible. And she came back in the 80s after establishing herself as someone who was a force to be reckoned with in the 60s. And uh, and by the time the 80s came around, she had certainly solidified herself as a survivor. So um, I think aligning yourself as a fan of that is uh, is saying something pretty, pretty respectful. And I will say, if you have the opportunity, check out footage of Beyonce's concerts right now, because just even to see from her perspective what she's looking out on, because she's in like soccer stadiums right now over in yeah. the UK. Pretty and wild. like France and all that. And when I saw like her vantage point, it's like, I don't even know how many people are in there. Is it 60,000? Is it 100,000? Like, I don't know. Wow. But it's a lot. And I want to say it's probably like 100,000. And she's just, it's, they're there for her. And like, it's crazy. And I saw some footage because Selena Gomez, I believe it was, went to a Beyonce concert. Uh, I think when Pre Beyonce was in France. And so you see Selena walking by and it was like a French fan who caught video of her and they're all like losing their marbles because Selena Gomez is walking by with their French from France accents <laughs> and they're swearing using like dropping F-bombs. And it's so funny because oh, fun. like all of three of us here know what it sounds like when our awesome French friends and Adam's one of them like <laughs> drops when you hear a Parisian drop an f-bomb it's like next level magic so <laughs> it's almost polite <laughs> yeah well wow. i'll drop a few f-bombs maybe on july 8th when i do see beyonce and i'm a part of those hundreds of thousands of people that are, that are going to see the show can't wait where, where are, are you seeing her in uh, toronto wow Amazing. so i'm going to toronto this weekend and i'm going back to toronto in a whole month wow just you you're know busy. living the jet set life <laughs> Now, do you want to talk about why you're going to Toronto now, or should we get to that a little bit later? Well, we can do it now. It's easy. I'm so good. I want a prize. Whatever. <laughs> What's the big deal? You know, the employer <laughs> thought I was worth flying out to Toronto to be given a prize with the rest of my team. I'll stop flying it. Even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even, That's incredible. They didn't even think take the train. No, I'm taking the fly, the fly, the plane. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> That's amazing because yeah. you do great work and that's why it's nice to be uh, acknowledged, certainly. Uh, and... So you can almost call me a 90s icon because, <laughs> you know, I was born in there, you know, born in the 90s. Yeah, you know, I can see the connection. Winning some yeah. prizes today. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That... Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Icon it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, a big prize for our little Adam. <laughs> Thank you very much. Quick, Good for quick you. Audible before Sharon goes on, because I forgot to, uh, to, I think we talked about this months ago. And then Adam, I'm going to put your social media skills to use right now. Uh oh. TLC, I believe by the time, just when we dropped this episode, I think two days or the next night, 
Um, it might even be the same night that our episode drops. TLC has their documentary, I believe, on Lifetime. Oh, cool. So if Adam, I, th- I think it might be Friday the 2nd of June or, th- or Saturday the 3rd. But It will be premiering on Saturday the 3rd of June. Okay. Nice. On Lifetime, right, Adam? Uh, Lifetime and A&E. Perfect. Okay. So yeah. if you have the opportunity, I, I, uh, I've seen them doing a lot of press. I haven't been able to watch any of it, but I know they've been doing press and that, that triggered me actually knowing like, oh yeah, they're coming back with that documentary. So enjoy TLC, uh, getting a, a, a glimpse into their, uh, path and, and journey and all that stuff. So. Cool. Now, uh, before we go on, I think it's important to say that, uh, well, it's time for your, your dose of Kelly's trivia. <laughs> Let's go. 90s. <laughs> now. Trivia. Bing bong. Bing bong. So we will start with the hard one news and politics. Uh, but I have a feeling like this should go well. Who was the <laughs> first woman to be appointed as U.S. Secretary of State in 1997? Adam. Adam. <laughs> no, I. you said it's hard, right? Well, well, well let's not, see. Well, News and politics is usually hard, but go ahead. Well, there's one woman in politics I know that was around in the 90s. I'll go for Hillary Clinton. Good guess, Adam. Oh, I thought you were going to say good answer. No, but <laughs> she was Secretary of State later in life. Well, well she was thing. she was Secretary of State, right? Yeah, she was. Was it 2002, Sharon? 2001, 2002? No, she, sorry, she became a junior senator in like 2001, 2002, and then it was like what like with for obama right so 08 ish yeah oh my god uh, that... i'll let you know from uh 2009 to 2013 yeah wow there we go um so it's crazy yeah. how long ago that is i know right the obama it seems like just yesterday she was in trouble for those emails which is just ridiculous yeah, and wasn't it on her blackberry also a dated reference <laughs> yeah. so sharon do you have a guess for this magical question i'm gonna guess um madeline albright yes ma'am wow hey. there we go <laughs> uh so we are now moving over to the sport category uh Ooh. wilson kipketter or kipketter we'll see i'm not sure set three Ooh. world records in which event during 1997 who wilson Kip Keter. K I P K E T E R. And yeah. what did he do? He did something great. That's three I'm about to world tell you. records. <laughs> what did you say, Sharon? He did something great. I'm about to tell you. Yeah, exactly. Um, in which event in 99, uh, 1997? Grand Prix. Like oh, that's nice. Guess. F1. No. No. no, I feel like that's a name I would have known. Um, I'll go for the International Athletics um 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 event and he probably beat three records in the decathlon oh that's a good guess adam also no but oh. uh, <laughs> i think the decathlon might have this event in it um which i think they do the 800 meters oh that's nice. a specific question kelly wouldn't we have blown your mind if we got that yeah, like legit <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially because I, I, adam can you check like what wilson's nationality is because uh kip keter k-i-p-k-e-t-e-r that actually sounds um like it could be a kenyan marathon runner yeah so you said k-y-p no k-i-p k-e-t-e-r and his first name is wilson um well i'm gonna surprise the beep out of you (laughs) um he is um he's danish oh my god i would have never known that (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Because sometimes when you hear the, because it's, um, the Kenyans are amazing, right? With the. Oh, but he was born in Kenya. There we go. <laughs> Woo! He was born in Kenya, but I think, yeah, he won his medals with, um, for Denmark. Yeah. Wow. This is because I watch way too many marathons on NBC Sports. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Yeah. All right. So that's my well turn. done. Good job, you guys. I mean, I got one, you know, and so that's good. We <laughs> learned so many great things here in 90s now. You know what I have to say is I love that I'm the one asking the question, but I actually got an answer to this. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Note the calendar. <laughs> yeah, put it on the calendar. Back love to it. you, Sharon. Well, here we go with, uh, I think, more reasoning why Mel B 
could be a part of this show, actually, because she's teasing some good news that we often tease here on 90s Now. <laughs> and yep. that is about a Spice Girls reunion with Victoria in the lineup. Ooh. Yeah. Spice Girls getting back together and performing. We would love that to happen. We talk about that a good amount. Mm -hmm. Victoria Beckham back in the mix. What? Well, theory is, according to Mel B, quote, if I say it enough, it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we are planning on releasing a statement. She says what that is, I can't say right now because we're just finishing off perfecting what we're going to be doing together, all five of us but it's going to be something that the fans are really going to love. It's like she cannot help herself. Spice World <laughs> she, 2. She just wants to imagine if it's Spice World 2, the movie. I saw that in theaters. I think I did also. Because my I nephew haven't. wanted to go. Mm. Who wanted to go? Your nephew? My nephew, Jonathan, wanted to go. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. He was a, he's a, he was a huge Spice Girls fan when he was. As one should be. Digital. Well, of course. Got good taste. I mean, King Charles is a Spice Girl fan. Wow. Yeah. King Charles. Um, uh, by the way, the last time the all five Spice Girls were together was all the way back in 2012 for the closing Olympics, uh, the closing ceremony at the 2012 Olympics in London. I was just thinking about that performance, how cool those opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies were for the London Olympics. Um, and I, I never like do the math, but like 11 years ago now, that's bonkers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was, a, I think, a real shining moment for them. I remember them on the, weren't they on, like, a van? Weren't they on like, little on, the, on those five little cars? They were each in a car, and they were on the top of a car? Like yes, a on cab? it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Super fun. Yeah. Well, I like, I, like, uh, I like what Mel B's putting out there. She's manifesting it. Manifest that. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I've lost my document. Hold on a sec. Because there was uh -oh. something else. We wanted. I lost the doc. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the uh, old dude and uh, new baby news. Because yep. the deal is this. Al Pacino is 83. He's going yeah. to be a daddy again next month. He and his beautiful girlfriend are expecting a baby. He's got a daughter, uh, Julie, I believe her name is, 33 years old. He's got twins, Olivia and Anton, who are 22, his girlfriend's kind of right in the middle there at 29. Wow. And due to have her, I think it's her first child, though we so. know it's not her first old dude because she was dating Mick Jagger before Al Pacino. She's obviously got a thing for older dudes. Who was who the other Sharon, who was the who other wealthy, older dude exactly, that, yeah. had, um, that had a kid uh, recently? You know, there was this um, other old actor that had a kid. Yeah, like literally a month oh, or two. Richard ago. Richard Gears had a few, I believe. No, it's some no. He's not that old though. Um, yeah, but he's like, isn't he like late? He's 60s? in the sixties, yeah, but he's not eighty three. Al Pacino could be Richard Gears' father. Because I thought I was reading the same <laughs> story. You know, sometimes Facebook pushes you like old stories, yep. and I was yep. like, why is why is Facebook pushing me this old story from two months ago? And I was like, oh no, it wasn't Hal that had a kid two years. Uh, two, uh was it Robert De Niro? Robert De Niro? Oh, yes, I think you're right. And Robert De Niro welcomes new baby at 79. Yikes. That was... It must be a... a three trend. weeks ago. <laughs> it must be a trend. Wow. There's, <laughs> there's just so much to calculate math-wise. And I guess if it's love, it's love, right? Yeah. Age, yeah. Uh, love shouldn't have a number, I guess. And yet all you see is 83 and 29, two really drastically different numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well if we flip those balloons around like we did on your birthday she could be 92 <laughs> that's true <laughs> or he'd be 38 which i'm sure he'd prefer <laughs> yeah there's that too mm -hmm. well cool we're at the point now where we can uh two-step down memory lane you guys by going uh, into a 90s rewind let's do it let's do it by going back to the beginning of our favorite decade and going a bit deeper still staying in the uh the hit section of the charts but I'm not even sure the last time I mentioned this song title by Glenn Medeiros and Bobby Brown. My goodness. She ain't worth it. <laughs> Girl ain't worth it. Great song. Mm. I think there's something about each song in this handful of uh, tunes on your 90s rewind that has a like a standout phrasing to it. Like Taylor Dane's I'll Be Your Shelter. Love that song. 
because anybody who would remember that song would totally go in to try and sing it like Taylor Dane and probably achieve that because we have faith that you can sing that well. Mm -hmm. uh, how about <laughs> Callaway's I Want to Be Rich? La, 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 la. I used to play that all the time. And I think the radio That's station I song. currently work for played it all the time also back in the day. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a fun song. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of hold on tunes. One from, because uh, we haven't talked about Kathy and Susan in a while. So hold <laughs> on from En Vogue. <laughs> was, uh, they were getting along back then. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, hold on by Wilson Phillips, who at this point on the charts in June of 1990, the Wilson Phillips, their their own hold on was a little bit higher up in the charts, but both great songs. Yeah. Uh, to wrap up uh, slightly more than a handful of tunes, I thought we'd get into the digital underground because the hump to dance is just fun to say. So fun. Also fun to do. Such a good song also. Yeah. Yeah. That's your 90s Rewind, you guys. Thank and, you, uh, Sharon. Sharon. Just before we, we wrap up, um, it'll uh, the news is out now um, and the interview will be live for you at this point. So Kelly Clarkson is on the Kelly Alexander show. And Isn't that's that amazing. Wild? Incredible. It is crazy. So, yeah. So if you haven't had a chance, uh, pop over to. Uh, well, actually, you're right. You're, if you're watching this, you're already on the YouTube channel. So that's great. YouTube.com slash Kelly Alexander show. If you're listening to that to us right now, that is where you find it. And uh, she was amazing. And she's everything you would hope Kelly Clarkson to be. Are we allowed to talk about any details about that? Am I able to ask you a question about something that we had texted about earlier today? Um, like content of the, the yeah. Uh, interview? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of, not. A, I don't want to dig too deep, but uh, I know from our conversation that uh, you touched on the fact that she's a Janet Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as of the day of uh, us recording this show, I watched uh, the Kelly Oki part of the uh, Kelly Clarkson show and she was singing Janet Jackson. And I'm like, wait a minute. And not that she, I know that she's done it before, but mm -hmm. I thought interesting timing because coming off of when your chat would have been. Mm -hmm. And then after she performed, she said, oh, yeah, I love doing Janet tunes. We've only done it like five times already. And she says, because I'm a fan. And I'm like, oh. so it was for sure sparked by your conversation with her without a doubt in my mind. Oh, thank you. I hope so. She was, uh, she like, and actually, uh, if you are a fan of Janet's, go watch Kelly's response to uh, when I asked her about being a Janet fan, because she, she got so excited to like share her thoughts on Janet and, and why she loves her and what she means to her. And also she has good things to say about Pink and Brandy Carlisle. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, very, just a dream come true. I'm super grateful to uh, our friends at Warner Music who made this happen for uh, us. And uh, yeah. And Kelly, just delightful, just like everything you would hope her to be and more. So like you, <laughs> uh, I, you know, what's funny is, is since the news has got out, and we've been promoting it. Um, lots of people have been writing on our social media. Uh, Kelly squared, which is fun. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. Nice. Uh, maybe I should get a t-shirt. Kelly's <laughs> you should totally, <laughs> and send it to her, but like send it to her in person and you're wearing one. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't get you flagged by security at all. Not at all. <laughs> that could be at all. Oh, cool. Well, you know what? I had it in my notes here that we uh, we were to congratulate Adam, but we've done that. But why not do it again? He's won an award and he's going to Toronto to accept it yep. because he does such great work at work and he does such great work on the pod. So congratulations, so, Adam. If I'm not back next week on the show, um, please call the local Toronto police <laughs> and um, <laughs> just let them know I'm there and I'm missing. OK, OK. <laughs> Missing and out. then we want him back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, you guys, thanks for uh, for the fun check-in. And uh, thanks to everybody, obviously. <laughs> I'm getting wrapped up in our conversation. Thanks to everybody for eavesdropping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for finding us wherever it is that you do that, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for listening to 90s Now. Still happening. 